Hey guys, it's Jess and this is my December wrap up. I know, I know it's been a super long time since my last video, but you know what? It is a new year and I am motivated and I am not going to flake out like I did last year, I promise. So December, December was a crazy month for me like it is for everybody I think but December has always been a really great reading month for me and this past December was like an incredible reading month for me. I read 16 books this December which I mean I know for some people that's like nothing but for me that is a lot like a lot like I don't think I've ever read that many books in that amount of time ever like in my life so I was really excited now to be fair not all of these are like super long novels but you know what 16 is still 16 so I am proud of that so because I read 16 books in December oh my god I decided to break these up into two different videos because I feel like if I go through all 16 books in one video you guys are gonna get sick of me really quickly so I'm gonna talk about the first eight books in this video and then I'll I'll talk about the next eight books in the next video. The first book that I read in December was Blackmore by Julianne Donaldson and I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a four star rating on Goodreads. This was actually my second book by this author. I read her debut, Edenbrook, back in August and I really enjoyed it as well. These are definitely Jane Austen-esque books. Um, definitely set during the Regency period and romantic. So if you're a fan of Jane Austen's books, which really who isn't, then and you, I think you'll enjoy these as well. Um, I have to admit that I did pause when I first started reading these books because you will see right on the cover it says a proper romance. Basically it just means that they are clean romances, there's no sex, but I thought maybe that might mean Christian as well. And I'm not anti-Christianity in any way, but sometimes those books can be a little bit preachy and I don't like that so much. But Fear not, there are some subtle references, but you barely even notice them, and they definitely don't overwhelm the books at all. So, like I said, if you're a fan of Jane Austen, then definitely check these books out. They're really great. The next book that I read was Drama by Raina Telgemeier. This is a graphic novel. I really enjoyed this as well. I gave this four stars. This I would have given 4.5 stars to if Goodreads would allow such a thing. I really think they should graduate to that because you know what? Sometimes a girl just needs a half. Anybody know where that quote comes from? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Anyway, this was actually my second graphic novel. I read my first one back in November and loved it. I don't know why it took me so long to get into graphic novels. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm so glad that I finally started. I knew I was going to love this book because it's called Drama and it's all about musical theater and if you know anything about me then you know what a huge theater person I am. For those of you who are new to my channel and don't know, um, I've been doing theater since I was very young. I was a theater major in college and I still do local theater now. In fact, I'm actually in a show right now. I'm in uh, Les Miserables. I'm playing Madame Tenardier. It's like my dream musical and I'm so excited. And you know what's so exciting about this book is I actually started reading it around the time when I was cast in Les Mis and guess what guess what guess what so she talks about the first show that she was in being Les Mis and there are the little Les Mis people right there is that not so so cool ah I love that it was like kismet so this is a book all about Callie and Callie is in the drama club out of her school and they're putting on a musical. Callie in particular works on crew. She works backstage and she's part of designing the set and it's just you can tell that Raina either does theater herself or knows people who do theater because she really captures all the stuff that happens backstage like all the drama the like offstage drama and the showmances which are like romances during a show get it um, but anyway I just loved it I mean this is my world people this is totally my world so I really really liked it the next book that I read was Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell I had to return this book back to the library, so I'll show you the cover right now.
Oh my gosh, it's so hard to know what even to say about this book because so many people have read it and loved it and said so many amazing things about it already that I don't know what else I can add other than to say that I absolutely loved it. I gave it a five star rating. I thought it was so wonderfully genuine and real and raw and you know the relationship was handled so well. I mean it was the like opposite of Insta Love. It was so organic. It really showed how these two people came together. They became became friends, they fell in love. I mean, it just, it was handled so, so well. Plus, I love that it was set during the 90s because you guys, I am old and that is my era. I graduated from high school in 1997, so I was the age that Eleanor and Park were during that time period. And it was just a really nostalgic, fun walk down memory lane. So the next two books that I read, I didn't actually read chronologically together, but it makes sense to talk about them at the same time. Most of you know that I was rereading the Little House on the Prairie series by Laura Ingalls Wilder, and there are some books that they included as part of this series, but they're not really. But because I am a completist kind of person, I wanted to read those two just to say that I really had read the entire series. Um, so one of those books is called On the Way Home, and this is actually a diary that Laura kept um, when she and her husband and her daughter and some family friends were traveling from South Dakota to Missouri, where they eventually settled. And it's interesting it's pretty dry sometimes. Um, I mean, it doesn't have any of the warmth of the of the series really. Um, so it was hard to really get interested, but it was interesting to see, you know, sort of what that kind of travel was like um, and, you know, where they went and the people that they ran into and all of that kind of thing. But, you know, there are some entries that really are just, you know, day number seven, we traveled here, it rained, the end of entry. You know, then the next book is called West From Home, and this is actually a collection of letters that Laura wrote to Almanzo Wilder when she went to San Francisco to visit her daughter during the World Fair. And I actually liked this one a little bit better um, because she goes into a lot more detail, and it was fun to sort of see her reaction to the city and to the fair. That was kind of cool. This, I think, was the first time she'd ever traveled for pleasure as opposed to, you know, like finding a new place to live. So that was that was cool. So I like that one better. But I mean, they're nothing like the series. So if you are a fan of Laura Ingalls Wilder, the person, then I would recommend these. If you love the series and are looking for more of the same, these are not those books. But I, I liked them. I gave them both three star ratings. The next book that I read was Bake Sale by Sarah Varon. And by the way, when it comes to pronunciations of authors, I'm pretty terrible. But I wanted to let you guys know about a new website that I found that actually there are audio pronunciations of authors and the audio is actually made by the author themselves. So they actually include some fun little tidbits about why they were named what they were, which is kind of cool. So if you're like me and you hate mispronouncing authors' names, then go check out the website. I'm going to leave a link in the description. It doesn't have everybody, but it has a lot of people. Anyway, Big Sale. This is another graphic novel, and I think Misty from Book Rep Misty was talking about this graphic novel, and she said it was really cute, so I wanted to read it, and it is. It's really cute. It wasn't quite what I thought it would be. I thought there would be a little more substance to the story, but there's not. It's just really cute, um, so I gave this a three-star rating. It is something that is fast and sweet and, you know, reading about cupcakes. <laughs> The next book that I read was The Long Way Home by Joss Whedon and Georges Gianti. And this is volume one of the season eight comics for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I was a massive, like massive, Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan back in the day. In fact, I even wrote fan fiction. That's how much into it I really was. But I never really expressed much interest in the comics. And I know that Joss Whedon considers them canon, and that's great. I just, I don't know, the show ended and I was kind of, 
you know, that was a good ending for me. But I saw this in the library and I thought I'd check it out. And, I, you know, I liked the story um, and the, the artwork was really great and looked very much like the actors. And it was all good. I think I just, for me, it just wasn't the same as experiencing the story through the show. So it just, yeah, I, I liked it, but it just, it wasn't, it wasn't the same for me. So I gave it a three star rating. The next book that I read was French Milk by Lucy Nisley, and that book went back to the library as well, so I'll show you a picture of the cover right now. I really enjoyed this book. I had actually read Lucy Nisley's most recent graphic novel, Relish, back in November, and I loved it. It was actually my first graphic novel, and so I definitely wanted to check out this one because this was her debut, and I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four-star rating. This is basically an illustrated diary where she focuses on the month that she and her mom went to Paris for her birthday, and it was just so much fun to see what they did and where they went and what they ate and everything was of course drawn out which was so much fun. I don't have any artistic talent that way at all like I can't draw at all so I'm so impressed with people who can and it was just a really fun way to experience the trip with her. It was interesting because a lot of people on Goodreads kind of complained because there were times when she was sort of having a bad day and so she'd talk about that and so people were saying you know oh she's so ungrateful she's on this amazing trip how can she be in a bad mood but I actually thought that that added to the authenticity of the book because the truth is that you can have bad days anywhere even when you're experiencing something amazing so I actually I felt like that sort of added an honesty to it so I liked it but yeah I really enjoyed this one I definitely look forward to more of her books so that's the last book that I'm going to talk about in this video, but if you will click here, then you can go to my next video where I talk about the rest of the books that I read in December. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!